All right, so in our last class, what we saw was introduction to HTML, the various HTML tags that are there. So we saw what is a tag and what is an element. And we saw last class that a tag is simply something like this that has both opening and close that is surrounded by square, uh, angle brackets. So that's what we saw. I said an element on the other hand is simply a tag which is both open and close and the content within it, for instance, we want to say h1 tag, we can say something like this h1 here is a tag. Sorry, I'm writing in caps. So we say h1, like this is a tag. And we want to say h1 element, and then we, we say there's some text inside of this, like this is the heading, for instance. Then this one now serves as an element. So the whole of this now is an element. So that was the differences between an element and a tag. Now, later on, we went on to saw, yes, we went on to see the different HTML elements. For instance, under the H tags, we saw H1, H2, we saw H3, we saw H4, H5, and H6. And what we saw literally was that in HTML, there are simply six headings. Meaning that if I'm right, if I write from heading one right up to heading six, we discover that there are six, but when I write something like heading seven, it is out of bound, meaning that it does not exist. Also, we saw how to include paragraphs, and we include paragraphs using the P tag. I mean, like anything I type here, like I can say this is a paragraph, something like this, and it displays in a paragraph format. So this is how paragraphs display, different from headings. Headings are bold, paragraphs are not bold. We also saw how you can create buttons. Also, that buttons are mostly used maybe to run JavaScript in something or to link from one place to another. An example of what I did was using an on-click event. And this on-click event, I was using an, a JavaScript function, which is the alert. I'm sure you already know about the alert function. If you did know JS, I can say hello world. And I save. And whenever I click this over here, it alerts hello world. And also, we also saw some other tags or some some other HTML tags such as the A tag which is used to link. So here I can specify URL for instance https this slash slash www maybe dot code with crest dot com or crestlancing.com or anything. And over here I can just put maybe crest lancing and I save and it appears and whenever I click it it takes me to codewithcrest.com. So those were the things we saw. We also saw how you can create a table. And we said to create a table, you use the table tag. So with the table tag here, you have what we call the table head, TH. And the TH here, sorry, we have what we call the table row. So you have to specify everything in rows. And in the row for the first columns of every table is always the heading. So we call it TH. As a TH here, we can call maybe the number, and then maybe the next table heading, maybe we want to call it maybe name. Let's say th, sorry. Let's say th, maybe this is the name. And then the next th maybe is the email. Maybe email, and I save. You see something like this. If I go to the next table row, tr, here, I can put now td, and td simply stands for table data. So TD here will be the table data. I can call this maybe number one. And I still go to the next TD. And I call maybe, sorry, TD. And I call this maybe Carlson. And then the next TD, TD, I can say Carl at gmail.com. And I save and we'll have something like this. So you see the way it's partitioned. Now, for me to be able to see it where I can add some styles here by simply giving the border to be equals to, I can say it should be one pixel solid black. And I say we have something like this that looks in form of a table. We also saw how you can create a form. I say that to create a form, you simply use the form tag, and in between the form, you have the action. I'm sure you should be familiar with this action here. For what the action does is simply to specify the back end that runs on it, like where it is found, the URL to actually link to it. I said in a form, you can create what we call labels. 
and you can name the labels for instance you can call this name for instance and after this we can create an input tag so we saw many input elements last class i'll upload the visual you see there and one of the most common one is of type text so if i save this you should see something like this name and your input tag where you are supposed to type it so there are many input tags such as uh, text email and and many others so this was what we saw last class and also in our last class we also saw styling and we said that in terms of styling we have inline styling and we have on-page styling or we have external styling and so for inline styling an example of inline styling is in this case here where we have the table and we are giving a border to the table meaning that we are styling the table inline but in the on-page styling here you go to your heading sorry the head region where you have the title after the title here you can simply just create a style tag so the style tag here and this style tag here in between you can write your css code for instance i can say the let me say i can say the paragraph color of the paragraph should be maybe white and let's see if you see that the paragraph here totally changes to white so that's simply what this on page styling means now the next type of styling which is the best type of styling and why did we say it was the best now for instance let us say if you come to any website normally you can always right click and you go to something like view page source so in viewing the page source here you'll be able to see that this particular person did or performed inline styling so you see the style the person performed it but at some instances you might not want people to know the kind of styling you put on your website because if people know what you the way you style there is possible things like attacking and doing things on your website so it's always very nice to actually prevent it so to prevent it you can use external styling like this and it also makes your work to be more organized loading the style sheet from an external file is nice so to do that you use this one here which is called a link tag and in the link tag here you have an attribute we said attribute are simply extra things that you add to your html tags to give it more functionality so for instance here an example of an attribute that we have here is this rel an example of another attribute in the a tag is the href so in the link tag you use the rel attribute and you specify that it is the style sheet and also you still have the href href simply specifies where the or the location to which you're trying to access so here we are trying to access the style of css and this is the style of css here they are found in the same directories so if i come over here for instance you see that i wrote some styles if i come to where we have the background to be yellow let me go back here and i try to change this yellow here maybe let's say to black and i save you discover that the background now is black or if I change maybe this, let me say to green, I type green here and I save, it changes to green. So depending on the, how you style it, whenever you create this styling and you check, it should actually like work this way. So this is the first thing you always do to test. Now the next thing we have to do that we have to do today is to work on the box model. Now when you open your HTML file, when it is new, when you watch the first video, you see how you create your HTML link your css and do all those things so let's say we have a blank html document if you are using vs code to get started you just press shift one and then you press tab so shift one you press tab will generate this random code here and all you need to do here you can just change the title let's call this html class so and that is what we want first then here we need to make sure that we link to our css so i'll use the link tab i'll just select css from here i'll just select css from here and then i'll make sure that i link to the same file where my standard css is found and if i save here you discover that the background changes automatic why because in our standard css file we actually already changed the background of the body all right let me remove this and allow just for the body so here we have this now in advanced css there's what we call the box model now the box model simply tries to specify how parents and children are kind of related 
So here, I'll create what we call a div, and a div is simply an HTML element that acts as a container. So I'll create a div, and in this div, I'll create another div, another div, like this. And still, I'll create another div, like this. Let me say another div, like this. So I have two divs. If I save, nothing happens. But if I come over here to our styles and I say, let div here have a width. Let's say it should have a width of 100% and a height of maybe, let's say height of 100 pixels. Let me change this to pixels, not percent, pixels. And I save, we still see no change. But now, since it is a container for us to see, we need to give it a background color. So if we see a background color red, for instance, we should be able to see something like this. But if you look in our code here, we have four, uh, sorry, three divs. This is the first, this is the second, and this is the third. So this first one here is acting like the parent. This one here is acting like the child, and this one also is acting like as the child. So have one parent, two child, and the two child divs are found inside, all of them are found inside the parent. But over here, the styling we have actually given to this div affects all the divs, meaning that both the parent, the child, and everyone has the same width, height, and background color. So what actually solves this in CSS is what we call classes and IDs. So a class is simply like you're giving a unique specifier to series of things that are acting like one. And then for an ID, you need to identify somebody uniquely. Like when you own your ID, it's your ID. We can come to a class of maybe software engineers or computer graphics and web designer or discover that those are two different sets of people. So over here, since I want this man here to be the container, I'll give a class here. I'll add an attribute called class and I'll give it a class like container. It is proven you can give any class that you want. So I want this one to be the container and the class of this man here will be the child. And also this one here also will be the child because they belong to the same class. They are all children of the container. So I'll save. And if I come back here now, let me say I want to style this differently. I want the dot container. So how do you actually target a specific class in your CSS? To target a specific class, you begin with the dot followed by the name of the class. So if I come here and I want to target this class, now, let me make them to be in two sides, something like this. So this is our HTML here. So if I come here to our HTML and I want to target this class, this particular class here, I begin with a dot. So I say dot followed by the class name. So I can say dot container like this. And if I say background color now should be blue and I save, you discover that it disappears. Why does it disappear? Because every container must have a width and height. If you have a container, you must define a width and height to that container. So I can now give a width to this container here of maybe, let's say, 100 pixels. And I say, and I give it a height of, let's say, of 100 pixels still. And I say, then we'll have something like this. Now, let me differentiate what pixel percentage do actually do. Now, over here, we have given this man a width of 100 pixels, meaning that if I increase the screen like this, the size of this particular element that we created remains the same. So that's one thing about pixels. The size does not change no matter the screen. But if I come here and I give it a width of 100% and I save, let's say 100% and I save, this one expands all through the width. And if I increase our screen here, you discover that it is still longer. So that's simply the difference between pixels and percentage. Pixel means fixed. Percentage means it can always adapt to the screen. So if I re reduce this like this and I'm increasing this like this, you discover that the width is increasing as the screen is increasing. As I'm reducing, the width is reducing as the screen is reducing. So that's the differences between percentage and pixels. Now, when you're always working, there's always one thing you find is this external extra margin is always applied here. And to remove that, you can always just give margin to the body. So the margin to the body of zero and also a padding 
to the body of zero still. So you give margin zero and padding zero and I save, you discover that it removes this. Now, over here, as we are seeing, we have created a container. Now this container has other elements. Now let's give styles to this element so that we can see it. So that we understand what the, uh, what the parental relationship actually means and what the box model is all about. So over here, we'll also style the child and under the child here, we'll give it a width. So give the child a width of about, let's say 200 pixels and we also give it a height height of 200 pixels they say this is what we have and then we want to see it so you have to give the background color so give background color of white for instance and you see we have something like this the one we discover it is far way bigger than our container here so there are some properties that we can give to the container to make sure that everything that happens it should be able to adapt so for the height i can say the height of this container should be automatic should be auto here and then you discover that the height is automatic now the way these elements are placed they are placed in a block format like this is one block this is another block there's another format that is called the inline format and with the inline format here when you look at this you discover that one one of it is bigger than another but all of them they are child that have the same width and height so first of all to solve this over here, there's what we call the flex properties. So we have the display here. Over here, let me just explain. We have the display block. So the way they are displaying right now, they are displaying in a block format. So the content inside of this container here is displaying in a block. That's why this one is stacking above another. So over here, we have content. That one doesn't have that much say. We have display flex. We have display flex box. We have flow route. We have grid, inline, we have inline block, inline flex, inline flex box. All these ones here are almost the same thing. But they just rotate what displays over here as block, content, flex, and this. But the one we'll focus more on is a display flex property. If I give the container a display flex and I save, you discover that what it does not more display in a block format, it switches to inline. So that's one thing about a display flex property. So what the display flex property actually do is it kind of gives you more controversy over what you're working on and the display pro flex property does not work alone it works with multiple now let us say over here all right there is a mistake here see if all right so we have this let me say i copy this Control c i go down i paste i paste i paste and i save we discover that here we should have multiple div elements. Let me see. Control S. Control S. Let me increase this. We still have just two. Why is it not displaying the others? Okay. All right. This one begins here. This one begins here. All right. Sorry. This is V, this is V, this is V, and this is V. All right, I'm sure this should be okay now. Now you see we have many of them here, and they are displaying far away bigger. Now when I increase, we see that there's still space. So the divs are there, but they are displaying in an haphazard manner. Now we have a width of 100% and a height of automatic. Now what we want to do is we want to show you like how it actually looks like. Let me drop this down to 100, 100 so that we see. Now there's a property I want to give you guys that will actually make us to see what is happening. Now I'll create a button to explain what we have as margin and padding. So I'll create a button here and I'll call it click me for instance. So this is a button called click me. All right, let me remove this button from the div. So I should not display the way it's displaying. And I save. We have a button here called click me. If I come over here and I call this button here, and I try to give this button what we call padding. So padding of about this 20 pixels here. Padding is simply spacing from the antenna. So it spaces the elements from the antenna. In that outside of the body of the element to the inside, like from where we have click me to the border. 
that's where planning occurs. But when we talk about margin, margin is simply spacing from the external. So we want to give this element margin of still 10 pixels and we save. It's when it shifts 10 pixels from the top, 10 pixels from the left, and also 10 pixels from the right. So all through we have 10 pixels. So if I say something like 110 pixels, it goes right up. So if we measure the distance from here to this border here, will be 110 pixels. Same as the distance from here to this will be 110 pixels. I don't know if the notion of margin and padding is okay. I'll get rid of this. Now over here, since we want to make sure that we can see the spaces beside each child element, we want to give it what we call margin. So we say margin here of about 10 pixels and I save. You now discover that here our things now appear in boxes. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Here we have one, two, three, four, five. So there are five of them. So if I increase this, you discover that they still display in one end. Now, in the CSS box model, as I said, it's not just only one property, which is the display flex. So there are other display properties. And for those other display properties to work, we need to include the display flex property. So here, there's what we call the align items center. Not just center, we just have, let me say align items. And align items have multiple. We have baseline, we have center. Now for us to work with the align item, let me say center for instance, and I say, over here you discover that nothing happens. If I increase this, you also discover that nothing happens. That's simply due to the height. If I come over here and I try to manipulate the height, and I say the height should be maybe 100 view height, VH stands for view height. You discover that what? Our squares here moves to the center. If I come back here and I remove this align item center and I save, it goes back up. So the align item center simply permits you to be able to send your items directly to the center of your page. Let's say you're trying to create something that you want a button or something to be directly at the center of your page. You can use the display flex property, the align item center, and you directly push the content to the center, like you're seeing here. So it is not just at all about align item center. Let me walk you guys through the others so we have end if i click on and i save you see it goes right down so if you want to just position your element down you can use end if you say first baseline and i save it takes us up so if i oh i mistakenly closed it let me open it back open with live saver okay Alright, so over here, if I increase it, you see it displays here. So that's what we have the first is it here, the baseline. If I remove this first baseline, so if I remove this for instance, and I go to the next, we have something flex end. If I save, it goes down to the end. So those, that is how you can manipulate. So you can put any property you want. Let's say for instance, we just want to stick to maybe the center. You can just put this and you put, let's say, something like this. And I save and it takes it to the center. Now the next one we'll talk about is the justify content. Justify content property also have many. I'll start from the justify content center. And I press this and I'll save it. Now, over here, it shows nothing. Why? Because the screen is actually small. But if I increase it, you discover what? It actually pushes the content directly to the center. Something like this. So, the justify content here now. Now, for the align items, the align items aligns your items on the vertical. So, on the vertical, on the justify content, justifies your content sorry why yes why the justify content justify your content on the horizontal so that's simply the difference align items is for the vertical justify content is for the horizontal so that's it so here there are always many properties let's say for instance we are trying to use this now to actually create something let me say let me just say we are trying to create something 
but before we do that let me also quickly explain something now i'll increase the number of these square boxes that are there just to show something so over here i'll copy all of this Control c i'll go down and i paste and i save now we discover that there are very, there are many of them now not that much let me see increase them Now you see, there are appearing many of them here and you can see that the sizes are shrinking. Now, how can we control this? This is what we call the flex direction and the flex wrap. The flex direction specifies how the item should be placed. For instance, this way it is displaying in form of inline, block inline. But if you want to change from block inline to normal block, we can say display direction. Let me see we have display sorry flex direction let me center so we'll say the flex direction so one the direction of flex or the direction where we'll be flexing so we can say flex direction here and there are two so I can Normally, there are two, just column and row. But there are times when you can reverse the elements or in, in maybe in a column format or in a row format. Let's start from the column. If I put column and I save, you discover that what it displays it on the horizontal. So if I change from column to row and I save, it switches back to the row. So depending on how you want it, you can always allow it. Let's say, for instance, we want something like this. And at a certain given point, if the size of our containers, because we have defined the sizes of our small child elements here. So if it combines the sizes of the element and it is small, you should send the other one to the next line. So to do that, you simply add what we call the flex wrap. So the flex wrap here does this. So if we say flex wrap and we say wrap and save, we discover what our sizes remain the same. When it pushes the content down to the next line whenever it sums the two spaces and it's not equal to. So if it sums this plus this plus this plus this plus the margin that we gave plus this small space here, if it is more than the new element coming, it sends the element to the next line. So that's simply the use of the wrap and flex direction. Now let's use this notion here to just create something that looks like a gallery. So maybe you can create something like this and what we just need to remove from here maybe is if align i justify content and then we have something displaying like this if you come here control c uh, you should have four of them if i increase this you see the way they display why because let me just go back this way because as it is increasing when the space is equivalent to such a way that if you remove one element from here and add here and it does not change the sizing of this, it will remove. So as I'm increasing and going, the two elements will move up. As I'm reducing and going down, they just keep reducing, 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 something like this. Something like this. Something like this. Yeah. So that's simply what this does. Now let me go to a website called Excels. This is our project for today, pixels, just to get some random images. I'll go to pixels. Please, I hope you guys are following up for those who are there. All right, let's say this is an image we want to use. We want to put some text and then maybe we'll display something. This one I don't want. That one looks a little bit of dumb. All right, let's say we want to use this image here. I right click on it and I click on copy image address. I could still download this image and I put it here to use it directly. But here I just want to copy the image address. So what I'll do here is over here, let me go back to our HTML. Over here, I want to create the two containers. Let me just clear this. We are done with this. Let me remove this tab. 
backspace we close this div then in here we want to first of all put our image sorry so we we'll put image using the img tag and we put the src here we save we should have our image here so the next thing i want to do the next thing i want to do here Let me close this one. So the next thing I want to do here is to add a container called the dot child. And in the dot child here, we want to put h1 that says maybe best fashion where for is this a female? For female, and I say we'll have something like this. But here we still have some styles for our child. So I'll just remove the styles and I save. We'll have something like this. Best fashion wear for females. And under that, we want to put something like some random text. So here I'll create a paragraph. In this paragraph, I'll just say, Lauren. This one is used to generate random text. Let me say 13. I'll have something like this. Lauren, if soon this, we just have some random text then here i want to create something like a span span is simply another type of element or tag and i want to say this one should be maybe something like we put a dollar sign a dollar sign then we'll put something like 310 dollars and then down here we want to create a button that says buy now and i say we'll have this now here the first thing we want to do is to be able to control how this happens now over here i'll remove all the styles for our container in the body here i'll remove this background still and then yeah i'll save so i have something like this let's start from default and we gradually get now over here in the container here what we want to do is we want to give this container specific width and height so we can give it something like a width let's say we want to start by giving this container a width of about let's say 500 pixels so how long the button uh, this uh, container will be will be 500 pixels i want to give it a height so i want to give it a height of let's estimate it to be about 350 pixels and i say we should have something like this nothing happens so for us to be able to see what we are working on we can give it a background color let's say red and i say we discover that this is what we have so if i increase this is how it will look like now i think it's okay but let's just keep on editing it so over here what i'll do here next is i want to start by making sure that this image here is okay so in image manipulation with html and css when you give your image a width, avoid giving it a height. And when you give it a height, avoid giving it a width. So with respect to our container here, we want this particular image to span from the top to the bottom inside the container. And what can actually help us is by giving this image a height of about 100%. So if I come here and I call IMG here and I give it a height of maybe 100%, percent and i save now you discover that the image fits totally now inside of the, that particular this container here so the next thing you want to do now is to make sure that everything should fit inside the container so what i'll do is for us to do that we need to use the box model that i'm just from showing you guys so here we can use the display flex so if i say display here i say flex by default the flex property flex them on the on a row so this is what we have for now so the next thing i want to do is to make sure that here for first of all the display flex property is okay but now i want to make sure that we are also giving something to the child so for the child here i want to give the child a margin from the left such as just to push it away from the image so i can give it the margin left of about 24 pixels and i save I you see it pushes it 24 pixels to the right so the next thing i want to do is this background here is not nice so i want to look for a background that will actually be good 
let's stick with something like blue and then we go over to dark blue something like this i don't know Maybe it is too dark and then here we can change the color let's say this saying color and we say the color should be white and we should have something like this and i think it's kind of looking a little bit good but here i can still give it okay um yeah, something like this but now when you look at our this guy here you discover that what it has spacing from here but it does not have spacing from here so the contents actually arrives at the border so we can reduce this maybe to 12 and then we'll also give margin from the right of 12 pixels i hope you should solve it so we have something like this it shares 24 into two and gives 12 from here 12 from here so that is it so this is what we have for now all right next thing is we want to style this man here make it bigger and then we'll send the button down so what i'll do is over here if i want to actually break out i can use the break to break but here i can simply over here i can still use the display flex so i say display maybe i say flex but what you discover is it flex the contents normally as a row so by default it flex flex to the row so i can now specify my flex direction to be the column like this and i'll have it back this way but our button is spans all through that one is not a problem because i actually wanted the button to be like that and then you see it actually gives us something like this over here the paragraph as you can see the paragraph is kind of scanting i can call the p-tab and i can say text align and i say justify so then it justifies the text normally like when you're typing in word so we can justify it the next thing is i want to call the spam so the spam here i can give it font size so the font size of this man here should be maybe let's say 24 pixels i save it is bigger i can see the font stroke weight so the font weight should be bolder so we want it to be bolder i save it is bolder and then i can change the color i can say color of this guy here should be maybe let's say which color should rhyme let's call it uh um I don't know let's try brown and save you would have something like this brown doesn't look nice so we should change to something reddish we have something like this and then this one here is good to go now for the button here we can give the button borders to be known so say the borders of this button should be known then we can say the border radius should be maybe six pixels. The one to give the button a height of about 50 pixels and I save. We should have something that looks like this. I can still give this button here some margin bottom. So margin from the bottom of about, let me say, 12 pixels and I save. We should have something like this that actually looks a little bit nice then to make it look more good we can give it a background color so we can give it a background color of maybe blue this blue i mean it will put sky blue something like sky blue so take it up and then the color of the text in the bottom so let's say the color of the text in the button should be white something like this and we have this yeah then over here i want to shift the span up i can give the margin bottom so margin bottom 12 pixels and let's save we should have this now the button is kind of smaller it's simply because we are pushing it down using this margin here so what i can actually do is i can remove this margin from here and i save our button is back okay then here in this chart here i will say line items 
to the center. Let me see align items space. Uh, let's try center and see where well, it pushes everything to the center. All right, so this is not what I want. Let's try justify contents. Justify contents, let's say space evenly. So I want to justify the content with even spacing, then we should have something like this. Okay, it's not bad. So we'll have something like this. To so make it look more nice over here, we want to give it a border radius. This is 24 pixels. And we say we have something like this. And it's too rounded, so I'll take it back to 12. And then I'll give overflow. Now, let me say overflow should be hidden. And I save. Now you discover that over here the button, the image was not having borders. So if I remove this and I save, you discover that what? There's border over here, but there's no border over here. So if I put it now, you discover that the border is all true. Now we have created something like this. We want to actually make it to just be at the center or nothing, just to be at the center. All right. So what we can do is we just go to the body and we give the body display flex properties. So here I can say display should be flex. Then we say align item center justify content center. And then we say justify content to the center. Okay. And I save it takes us to the center. Now I have to give the body a height, a long height, so that it will be able to display it right at the center. So I want to give the height of a hundred view height. And I save it's at the center. So even if I increase this, what we have created is directly at the center. At times you want to change the font, you can always use Google Font, provided you are connected to the internet. So I can go to fonts.google.com. Enter here. We we'll go to Google Font. We we'll look for a good font and we we'll give it there so that it should actually look a little bit nice. So here, I'll go through this. Uh, all right. Let's see. This one looks nice. So what I'll actually do here is I'll just select the one I want. So this. I'll add it over here. I can use the import so that I import it on CSS and copy this. Then I'll go back to where I'm typing. So this is CSS. I'll import the font here. So I'll remove this style. And this style and I allow just the import. And I say we have imported. So if I copy fonts family this and I come here and I put it here and I save. If I come back here, you should see that our our design has a different font. Now it is the font have actually changed everything. So it's looking kind of weird. So over here I can come space evenly due to the margins I provided. So here Span button margin should be out. Okay. Now that the margin is out, it's still hiding. Do they see any other margin again? Alright, chart space evenly. All right, let me try to reduce the text here. Let's just get something out. All right, so we have this, but it's still kind of looking. Let me see, did I specify the width? 
the height for the child. Alright, let me give it the height of auto. So the height here should be auto. Something like this. It is still the same. So what is actually the problem? Our new form seems to just scatter everything. Alright, so let me just check quickly. Over here. Alright, so our font is kind of displaying bigger items with respect to what we have. So here, I'll just try to get rid of some content. Like, for instance, okay. Let me say, Lorem Gibson Dino Lominus Upper Loss Gate. Something like this. Then this space evenly. Let's cross space between. And we save. Okay. Then now back to the button. Let's give it back our margin button. So say margin from the bottom of 12 pixels. And save and then we can just copy this and save so now you can see we have something that looks good with a good font so over here we have simply design something from the recap we did and everything we have seen now we can see how to actually create something like this so your assignment is simply to recreate what we have done i don't know i'll take a screenshot of it and i'll send to the group in such a way that you guys can redo it please if you can do it over the weekend and submit before we start the new challenge for the next week i know this week i did not say anything that was simply because from the all the challenges we have been doing there wasn't any live event here that we actually had so it was still due to no live event that i actually had to not send something i had to be sure that we actually went through a series of things before I'm sending any live event. So this is what we have done so far. And I'm sure I should be stopping the class now. It's already four minutes left to make it an hour. And the class was scheduled for just an hour. So for those who are there, hey, Luis, delegate, you're welcome. Thank you, sir. I came late. <laughs> I see, I see. But it's not too bad. I'll upload a video and I'll send to the group so that maybe even if you have missed something, Will not be that much okay so no all right so this is actually the end please for those who are following up if you have any question you can ask 